Welcome to A Secret to Hunting Thesis Resources, the easy, demystifying prelude to beginning your thesis. If you're in the process of hunting down resources for your master's thesis or comprehensive exam questions, then you likely already have your topic in mind. You may not yet have your thesis statement entirely figured out, of course, and you may find through your research that the statement you're trying to address is in need of reworking. So let's just begin with the topic in our hunt for resources. Once you know your topic, try to determine your target. If your topic involves the idea of participated theonomy as expressed in John Paul II's encyclical Veritatis Splendor, then your target is John Paul II and any resources that advance this idea. Your primary resources, then, are those that provide original insight into advancing this topic. The encyclical itself will be a primary resource, and the documents from which the Pope drew in advancing his idea would be primary resources. Other documents he addresses, for instance, Immanuel Kant's ideas on radical autonomy, would also be primary because of their oppositional relationship to the idea that he himself is advancing. Next, find the secondary sources. A secondary source is merely that which talks about a primary source. Once you have your primary sources figured out, enter the EBSCO database and just type in the titles. If an inordinate number of commentaries appear on a given resource, limit the title search by entering keyword qualifiers like theonomy when searching under Veritatis Splendor. Once you find a selection of commentaries on a given topic, your next step is an integrity check. You're looking for two things here. First is an understanding of its orientation. Some of the resources you find will not be orientated toward a Catholic way of thinking. This doesn't disqualify them, it qualifies them. You want to know, after all, with what you're dealing, and you can bring in resources that are counter to the thesis you're trying to advance in order to understand their arguments and demonstrate how a Catholic way of thinking provides a fullness of the truth these articles are trying to reach. Second is an understanding of its use value. All resources are evidentiary by nature. The questions you want to ask of any resource concern whether and in what way it provides evidence that helps you to advance the point or purpose of your paper. It may do so in concordance with your idea or in opposition to it. But all that will be based on how you analyze the argument that's being conveyed within the source material. This leads us to the next step. Always read the secondary resources first. The reason for this is that the critical commentary provided by the secondary resources will shed light on your reading of the primary resources. Primary resources can be dense. They can be hard to unpack when read in isolation of the collective wisdom or ignorance of the extant criticism. They may contain ideas that are obviously true to you, but that are problematic for others. When John Paul II first mentioned in his October 8, 1980 Theology of the Body Address that it is possible for a man to commit adultery with his own wife, the statement was not well received outside of Catholic circles. Even within, it might be argued, some Catholic circles. Your reading the critical commentary on that will help you problematize the primary source material. That is, to find the areas within it that are contentious and to explain those contentions with a Catholic mind. After you've read the secondary sources, go back to the primary sources. Some of them you may have already read in your time at the seminary. And reread each one straight through, keeping a list of contentions that you've collected close by for purposes of annotating the primary document. See if you can identify within the sources themselves the answers to some of the questions that the critical commentaries have brought to light. Many of the commentators you read may have responded only to one primary source, but you yourself will be reading several primary sources. Perhaps an argument advanced by one critic is addressed by another critic and provides you with the primary resource that addresses it. Perhaps your reading of Veritatis Splendor in light of your other readings by John Paul II illuminates things that the critics did not consider or left unaddressed. In any case, when you're done reading the primary source straight through, return to your annotations and start thinking about them, even drafting notes concerning them. We've reached the end of the first movie, and I leave you with the image of the frog ready to capture its prey. In your case, the prey you're after is a list of resources. Once you've determined your list of resources, you're a short step away from being able to confirm or amend the working thesis statement that you'll have, no doubt, by this point in time, generated. This is why, after you've correctly cited your resource, you'll want to provide yourself with a helpful tool, a short annotation, no more than 25 words, concerning how, exactly, is that source relevant to the thesis. It does no good your investing time writing up what the source is about if you don't also explain how it's useful to you. In this way, if you do change your thesis statement, you'll know instantly which among your list of resources is no longer of value and can be excised from the document. Good luck in your hunting.